Hey everyone, have you ever wondered if you can actually sculpt your abs to get that coveted V-shape at the bottom? Can you really target those lower abs? Or is that just a fitness myth waiting to be busted? Well, you're in the right place to find out. So here's the deal. While many of us are chasing that dream of perfect lower abs, rocking out countless leg lifts in hopes of achieving it, we might be marching on the spot. Surprise, surprise, the lower abs don't actually have anything to do with lifting your legs. That's right. Those leg lifts aren't actually directly carving out your lower abs as you might have thought. The rectus abdominis, or what we commonly call the abs, starts from the ribs and runs down to attach at the pelvis, not on the leg bone at all. This muscle is segmented by tendons into upper and lower sections. But despite this segmentation, you can't isolate the lower parts by just moving your legs. When you're doing leg lifts, it's your hip flexors that are doing the heavy lifting, not your lower abs. The abs mainly serve as stabilizers during these exercises, engaging both the upper and lower sections equally. Now, I know some of you might be skeptical and think, that's BS. All parts of the abs can be targeted, but stick with me. I'll explain how understanding the real anatomy of the abs can transform the way you work out, help you achieve better results, and avoid unnecessary strain, especially on your lower back. So let's dive deeper and get to the truth about sculpting those abs correctly. All right, let's get straight to the point. If you've been doubting the idea of targeting specific parts of your abs, hold on, because I'm about to change your mind with solid science. But first, let me reveal a game-changing way to really feel the burn in your lower abs like never before. Trust me, after trying what I'm about to show you, you'll never question the ability to target your lower abs again. This is a technique based on a crucial move called the posterior pelvic tilt, or PPT for short. Imagine your pelvis is a bowl of water. Now, to do a PPT, you tilt the bottom forward, spilling water out the back. This move is key because your lower abs actually attach to the bottom front of your pelvis. So, when they contract, they're pulling your pelvis into that tilt, making PPT the ultimate move to specifically engage and strengthen those lower abs. Okay, now let's dive into the two ultimate techniques to really target your lower abs like a pro. First up, you'll need a bit of gear, but believe me, it's totally worth it. Grab a rack with a pull-up bar and set up a barbell on adjustable holders to match the height just above your hips when you're hanging. A barbell pad? Definitely grab one or improvise with a yoga mat for comfort and effectiveness. And don't forget elbow or wrist straps to keep your focus on your abs, not your grip. Here's the move. Hang from the bar, place the barbell or padded bar right above your hips, bend your knees, and use your lower abs to perform a perfect posterior pelvic tilt. Imagine rotating your pelvis forward and up over the bar, then controlling it back down. The key here is the downward phase. It's crucial for strengthening. Keep your knees constantly bent to signal to your brain that this isn't about lifting your legs. The real magic happens with the rotation of your pelvis. That's what fires up those lower abs. To really get what I'm saying, let's compare these advanced lower ab techniques with your typical leg lifts. When you do leg lifts, most of the effort is actually firing up your hip flexors, not your lower abs. Plus, there's no back support, which means your body tends to rock backward as you lift your legs. This backward motion pretty much nullifies any minor posterior pelvic tilt, PPT effect you might manage, because the muscle moment, think about the actual impact on your abs, is tiny. It's like doing a bicep curl but letting your elbow drift back. Even though you're moving the same weight, the tension on your biceps just isn't there. Now contrast that with using back support and focusing solely on PPT rather than lifting your legs. This setup makes the exercise way more effective at targeting your lower abs. You're really going to feel it. Even using just your body weight can leave your lower abs feeling it for days. And if you're up for a challenge, try adding a medicine ball between your knees to crank up that resistance. This is not just any ab workout. This is a precision move that hits the lower abs hard Sometimes you just don't have the time or equipment to set up a full workout. That's where this bench technique comes into play, letting you target those lower abs without all the fuss. Here's how you do it. Lie on your back on a bench, but keep your hips just off the edge, supporting yourself with your hands behind your head. Let your hips drop into an anterior tilt. Make sure your feet don't touch the ground. Then engage your lower abs to perform a full range of motion posterior pelvic tilt, PPT. Focus on moving slowly through the eccentric phase as you return to starting position, keeping your knees bent to keep the focus off your legs and on your pelvis. This bench technique is a perfect complement to the hanging ab workout because it shifts the point of maximum resistance, offering a different strain on your lower abs. The hanging move places the hardest part when your abs are fully contracted, while lying down shifts it towards when your abs start to extend. Mixing these techniques, thanks to varying resistance points, really develops your muscles effectively. 
For those looking for variations, try this on a decline bench to adjust the tension, or simplify it by keeping your hips on the bench to make it beginner friendly. This simpler version cuts out the hip drop phase, easing the intensity, but still giving your abs a good workout. Mixing up these techniques will definitely let you feel the difference in how your lower abs are engaged and developed. All right, for those skeptics out there, let's break down how we can target specific parts of our abs. Even though, yes, the rectus abdominis runs from top to bottom, when we exercise, all regions of the abs get activated, but not equally. Here's why. First off, the segmented nature of the abs with tendinous intersections means each section can almost act like its own muscle with a unique origin and insertion points. This segmentation allows for selective activation, which can be clearly demonstrated. I can actually contract the upper, middle, and lower regions of my abs independently. And this isn't just a party trick. It's backed by EMG studies like those involving belly dancers. Secondly, even muscles served by one nerve like the biceps or triceps show that different parts can be activated more than others based on how you train them. Factors like the angle of resistance, the specific exercise, the range of motion, type and speed of contraction all play huge roles in which muscle fibers are the most engaged. Looking at the evidence, studies have shown varied activation across the abs. For instance, a 2009 EMG study revealed that curl-ups hit the upper abs more, while exercises like the jackknife with proper posterior pelvic tilt targeted the lower abs more effectively. Another study highlighted that the upper and lower abs can even fatigue at different rates depending on the exercise, proving that varying your workout can specifically enhance different areas of your abs. This shows the power of exercise variation in effectively targeting different muscle regions. Ever wondered if different levels of ab activation actually translate into different amounts of muscle growth? Well, the answer is a resounding yes. Just last year, a study used extended field of view ultrasound to confirm that there are at least three distinct sections of the abs, upper, middle, and lower. They found that doing sit-ups at three different angles affected each region differently, altering muscle thickness and length. This proves that even slight changes in angles can impact muscle growth in specific areas, but it gets even better. Another study identified four distinct functional regions of the abs, showing that exercises involving lower body movement significantly boost growth in the lower two regions compared to the upper two. So the next time someone doubts the ability to target specific ab areas, remember this research. However, there's still confusion out there. For instance, a recent study that saw no difference in muscle growth between upper and lower abs used straight leg lifts with a flat pelvis as the lower ab exercise. But as we've discussed, that kind of exercise won't specifically engage the lower abs since they don't attach to the legs. It just stabilizes the core, equally working both the upper and lower regions. If there's any skepticism left, I urge you to try the exercises I demonstrated, especially those involving proper posterior pelvic tilt. Do them with correct form, and any doubts will disappear. To truly maximize your lower ab workouts, integrate these techniques into a well-rounded core program that targets every abdominal region, including the obliques and transverse abdominis, all backed by the latest exercise science. That's all for today's video. Thanks for tuning in. If you liked what you saw, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below, and make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Keep flexing, keep glowing, and stay safe. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time.